Hi, John Dick here, philanthropist, urging you to save the noble lemming. Okay, now that we've sorted out the important stuff, let's talk about wetness in scum. Now, before you just go and wet yourself, there's a few things you should know. So, I'm going to jump right into this video blog. So, what's different between scum and other survival games when it comes to getting wet? Let me explain it by examining this sharp-dressed young man. It's easy to see that he's fully capable of surviving almost anything that nature can throw at him. The secret of his success is multiple layers of clothing that scum supports. Each piece of cloth has important properties like heat insulation, armor, inventory slots, and finally, there's a wetness property. All of these parameters are defined by material, meaning that a flannel shirt will perform differently than a leather jacket. As you can see from the inventory perspective, there are groups of layers per body region. The top group is assigned to the character's head, the middle one covers the torso area, while the bottom part is for legs and feet. By stacking layers of clothing, you combine their parameters in the same way you would do in real life. When it comes to layered clothing, your grandma was right. It helps you to adapt to any weather condition possible. So how can you get wet in the game? The most obvious way is by sweating. While performing tasks, the body will heat up. In an attempt to cool you down, the body responds with perspiration. This kind of moisture is propagated from the inside out and also causes additional fluid loss or dehydration. The next way is the impact of the weather. To avoid getting wet in rain, try to find a dry spot fast or wear at least some water-resistant gear. Being drenched in the rain during cold weather will impact immune system and your character will probably get sick. In the following example, you can see twin brothers on their way to the beach. Adolf on the left is wearing standard military-issued tactical jacket and Desmond on the right has his all-time favorite olive raincoat. They both have several layers of the same clothes beneath the outer layer. If you take a closer look at the inventory, you might notice that each item has its own weight listed in the top right part of the icon. The same value is also shown with green colored font so that it can be tracked more easily. All other inventory slots are empty because both brothers forgot to take their inflatable swimming arm bins with them to the beach. Luckily for them, they won't drown because the rain will come again, falling on their heads like a memory. As the rain starts to pour down on these poor guys, their clothes will start to absorb the water and become wet. If we speed up the time, you'll be able to see the impact of rain on the different layers of clothing much better. Carefully examine the green numbers. As expected, the tactical jacket gets wet relatively quickly along with a backpack, pants and shoes. Increasing values in green actually represent the amount of water that has been absorbed by clothes and gear. On the right, Desmond is doing much better. Although his backpack, pants, and shoes are completely drenched, his upper body is dry. For Adolf, things are going from bad to worse. It seems that the tactical jacket waterproof factor isn't as good as advertised and leaks water on his sweater and shirt, making him completely wet. Furthermore, as Adolf's clothes are getting wet, they're also getting heavier, meaning that he'll be carrying an additional 13 plus ounces of weight all the way back home. This will certainly affect his calorie consumption during that trip and his performance will suffer as well. In scum, moisture absorption and retention depends on the material that's being used for clothing. Let's bring out the sunshine again. Do notice that both guys were standing completely still in heavy rain just because we asked them nicely. These guys are true heroes. Now, it's time to see what happened with the inner layers of clothing. As you can see, Adolf's sweater is all wet while Desmond's is still dry. If we drop the sweaters down, you can see that the same thing also happened to their hipster shirts. In the previous part of the video, you might have noticed that different parts of the clothing can absorb or retain different percentages of water. As in real life, some parts of the body can become wetter than others. In scum, we handle wetness per body part along with separate layers of clothes that can have different wetness values also. This means that parts of your gear can be dry or wet depending on what you do. Body parts that are covered separately are feet, legs, torso, hands, and head. If you're standing in the water up to your waistline, then only your legs and feet will be wet. 
the rest of your body will stay dry. Also, if you jump into the water, your gear will almost instantly become fully wet, even if you have a raincoat or some other water-resistant clothing that isn't fully sealed, it will not help you to stay dry. The success formula here is, if you want to keep your gear dry, stay away from the bodies of water, or at least drop everything to the ground before you enter. In this section of the video, our guy has just practiced some swimming in the shallow waters, keeping his gear with him to protect it from thieves and bears. He did leave an old orange shirt on the beach in case he's going to need some dry clothes later. Or at least, that's what we were thinking he was up to. However, his plan was much more sinister. He actually decided to wear a dry shirt below his other clothes with the intention to deceive the game, to make it think that he has dry clothes on, simply because the first dry clothing layer is closest to the skin. In all other games, this would be called exploiting or cheating. But here in Scum, we don't care about that, simply because we have fluid diffusion and osmosis built into the game. For those of you who don't know, diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration, meaning that his dry orange t-shirt will soon become a wet orange t-shirt. After everything you've seen so far, if you still think that it's okay to jump into deep water with all your gear on, take a moment to see what happened to our dear Adolf last year. That particular summer day, he was showing off at the pier, he accidentally fell into the water along with his traveling backpack on his back. To make things even worse, the backpack was full of his mother's lingerie. The next thing you know, all that stuff simply pulled him directly to the bottom. The only way to survive in this kind of situation is to drop excessive weight until the buoyancy pulls you up. The amount of gear that your character can carry while swimming largely depends on your swimming skill and stamina. Sooner or later, you'll become tired and most likely, you'll sink. It's as simple as that. Now, let's talk about ways of drying your stuff off once it becomes wet. The easiest way to dry your clothes is by using the heat of your body in combination with the air temperature and wind. This is particularly useful during the summer when wet clothes keep you cool and safe from the excessive sweating and dehydration. Also, it's good to know that if you keep moving, your body will get warmer and you'll dry your clothes faster. In the current example, you can see that simply by standing in the sunlight, you can dry your gear. Also, you can see that the helmet has dried much faster than the backpack because they're different materials. In the situations where air temperature is low, you can use heat sources to dry your clothes. How fast something will dry depends on many factors, such as the material type. Items that conduct heat better will be dried faster. The amount of water absorbed. If more water is absorbed, it takes more time for clothes to dry. Relative humidity. If humidity in the air is high, drying gets slower and dry clothes can even get wet. Wind. Helps a lot in drying by carrying the water vapor away, preventing any concentration of moisture on the clothes. Air temperature. Higher temperatures will help to dry clothes faster then the number of wet layers stacked. Keeping wet clothing stacked on you is bad and it slows down the drying time significantly. In the current example, the player is using fire as a heat source to dry his clothes. Notice how the distance from the fire source influences the speed of his drying clothes. While the shirt, being closest to the fire, is almost dry, a jock jacket is a bit damp. On the other hand, pants that were on the character the whole time are still fully wet since they were far away from the heat source. To reduce drying time, keep your wet clothes spread near the heat source. Also, if you don't have any spare dry clothes, make sure not to freeze to death while waiting for your clothes to dry. 
Okay, for now, this is more or less everything you need to know about wetting yourself in scum. All that you've seen is still a work in progress and is subject to change. In the future, we plan to improve things even more, add some new ways of getting wet, but you can also find your own ways by being a creative player. We hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to follow Scum on Steam, Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog, www.scumgame.com.